first name is Frederick, F-R-E-D-R-I-C-K. All right. Hey, Frederick, what's happening, man? Not much. It's great to actually speak with you guys. Like I said, it's amazing because I have two of the best YouTubers and I, on YouTube. Oh, man, appreciate I, I, it. I, yeah, you couldn't hear his voice. Yeah, my, my, um, I actually, when I got into home theater, I was, I saw your channel first and that was mm -hmm. like my start. So yeah. I, um, just started to watch a lot of videos and stuff after that because you, you kind of got me going. And mm -hmm. the thing that I love about Mike is that he is just so sincere and he's honest, but he's, he's happy and excited but calm at the same time, which is amazing. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> and, then, and then Joe, I love Joe's channel because I love bass and I love the stuff that he does with the subwoofers and, and all that stuff. So it's great. But the reason that I wanted to um, call in is because I've asked a question a few times and I think like the chat was kind of, um, they, they had their own twist on what I was saying. Mm, and okay. I understand it because everyone has a different setup, right? Yeah, so sure. Basically, cool. <laughs> this has come up like a million times. You guys are probably so tired of this, but but basically, this is what I have. I I started building my system like just piece by piece. Things that I had, I had some sure. like and acoustic uh, towers, right? The original A two hundred. So I used those as my front uh, speakers. Then I got a um, I got a Boston acoustic center channel. That's mm -hmm. my center, and then I got a bunch of Infinity bookshelf monitors. Um, so I got those for my bed layer for the rest of the bed layer. And okay. my, my overheads, right? <laughs> my Atmos overhead. So I have a 7.1, and I have four subwoofers. I have two um, um, SB2000 Pros. Okay. And I have two SB3000, right? Nice, yeah. So here's, now I, what I did is since the receiver had the pre outs, I brought amplifiers, right? So I brought okay. the basic amplifiers from Emotiva. Sure. And with those, they only have RCA outs, right? Right. Which is fine. They're, they're the basic line, right? But they had the power that I needed and everything. So I used those. Yep. Now, my question, because I know you've man, Mike, <laughs> you've mentioned a few times, and, and, I, and I love the fact that you, you actually um, changed your stance. You didn't, like, dig your feet into the ground. You <laughs> kind of said... Maybe the differences that you heard when you went separate mm -hmm. were because of the um, the correction, room correction. The, it could be yeah, the correction, the room correction, sure. right? Hundred percent. So my question was, is like with my current setup, I have an AVR, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm wondering buying one of these super expensive um, processors, right? Okay. Yeah, and replacing my AVR, right? Since I already have the amplification and everything else. Yeah. Would it really make a difference? And that because yeah. people who have like super expensive AVRs, mm -hmm. if you ask them the question, they would just laugh at you and say, of yeah. course, it's the right. best thing I've ever sure. done in my sure. life. Right. Yeah. But is it really? That's yeah. the real question. So and, the my, and my room is treated. That's the yeah. other thing I, I meant to mention sure. recently. I uh, contacted GFK and I got um, acoustic treatment for the entire space. Okay, good. Calculations. Yeah. Right. So that's all taken care of. It sounds good to me. Right. But again, it keeps it, that it's where I'm wondering yeah. if I know the it, it would make a difference, right? Because <laughs> yeah, you're spending a lot of money to do that, right? Exactly. The processor, look at the yep. new processor, just came out and yep. it's seven thousand dollars. I know. Right? I totally get it. The original the, the previous model was like way less than that, but they decided I guess since mm -hmm. we're so willing to open our wallets, they may as well get some money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that question. It was very long, sure. but I hope you guys. Can yeah. Some more. Great. Honestly, it's a great question. It's a valid question because we all want to know that. Like if I go from a, an, an AVR to separates, is it going to be a drastic difference? And what I always try to do on my channel, I don't, I don't try to make definitives. I just try to share with you what I experienced. Now, the problem with, you know, my experience is that, think about this, we had the uh, Marantz SR8015 flagship AVR at that time from Marantz. Beautiful. I mean, it sounds great. It's got a lot of power. I was using it in preamp mode, so all the internal amplifiers were turned off, connected to my Monolith 11X amplifier. We listened to it, did a couple of demos, then we unhooked that connected the um, AV7706, ran through, you know, we had to run Odyssey, 
And so think about this. There's, I mean, there's probably at least a minimum because I've got 11 speakers. There's a minimum of 30 minutes difference here, right? Maybe 40, let's just say it took us 45 minutes to connect it. I'm not a hundred percent sure that our, actually I'm, I'm almost positive. Our memory, audio memory can't remember exactly like what we heard 45 minutes ago to be able to accurately compare the differences. But all I can do is share what we experienced. And we felt that we absolutely, because I had been listening to my setup for, you know, think about this for at least a year with that um, AVR. And so I have a pretty good idea of like, okay, what is what it sounds like. So if something changes, I should be able to notice those types of things. So I felt that we, I did hear more separation, you know, just basically like, each channel was a lot more noticeable, if that makes sense. I was hearing more content, more detail from each individual speaker. Um, that was the biggest thing. It wasn't night and day, but I did feel like it was definitely a better experience. Now, is that placebo? Is that uh, Odyssey, um, you know, calibrating differently and EQing the sound differently on you know, the second time, which was the AV7706. Is that because um, there are better, you know, components in a processor? I don't know. And I shared in that video, I can't tell you what or why we heard it. This is just what we heard and what yeah. we experienced in my room and in this environment. So, you know, if your room is really, really bad and you don't have any treatment, I think some of these higher end systems like a trend off could absolutely probably do a better job than Odyssey than even direct live um, with a treated room. If it, if you've got good acoustics and the room uh, or the uh, room correction doesn't have to do much tweaking, you may not notice a massive difference between direct live Lingdorf. Now we did do some blind AB comparisons at M wave um, the Midwest AV experience. And we were able to fast switch between like five different uh, room correction software. So we had direct live, we had a room perfect, we had odyssey and I didn't get a chance to be in that demo, but people said they could definitely hear a difference. Some, I think I, I'm just going by memory, maybe like Anthem, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of emphasized the bass more, or maybe it was direct live. And so, so out of the, how about this mm -hmm. question then for you, Michael, mm -hmm. uh, between separate, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Preamp, uh, yeah. versus AVR. Yeah. Do you think the difference you're going to notice a bigger difference if it is the, you know, better components, like you're saying it might right. be, you right. think it's yeah. that, Oh, what happened? Oh, somebody else is trying to call. Oh. Do you think it's that, or do you think that you'd hear a bigger difference with different or better room correction? I think you'll hear more of a difference with better uh, room correction. I don't think like the higher end DAX you're going to hear as much difference in. I know, and that's controversial too, sure. that people say, well, I can hear a difference between this $500 DAC and this $1,200 DAC. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know. Um, but I, I would, I would venture to say that a better room correction, you're going to hear much more audible differences than you would in, you know, maybe they're using different circuitry. And sometimes you get both, right? Sometimes you yeah, get, sure. uh, you great. spend more and you get Correct. better everything, you know? Yeah. So it depends on what you're coming from also. Mm -hmm. you you know, know. It's funny. One thing that I just wanted to comment on <clears throat> was when I got new room correction, I mean, when I got the uh, acoustic panels in the room, Mm -hmm. I noticed a big difference, right? I noticed mm -hmm. that, like my even my rears, which I was yep. really surprised. My rear and my rear overheads. Yep. Um, I heard. I it was amazing how they just suddenly came mm -hmm. alive, right? And I didn't change anything other than running the room correction again. Yep. And it was just like I noticed that now. I just mm -hmm. it's like there's so much happening back and around it and above yep. and the back. Yeah. That I'm really surprised. And that's one of the reasons I asked the question, because then I say, OK, well, this sounds good to me. But then I'm like, OK, <laughs> all right, we'll spend seven thousand. Yeah. That, uh, and that's always the age old question. It's like, you know, you can chase this rabbit as far as you want. You're never going to catch him. It, you know, it, he's always going to outrun you. There's always something shiny around the corner. There's always something bigger, better. 
um, at some point, it's there's nothing wrong with just sitting down and going, you know what? I really enjoy what I've got right now. If there's certain aspects of your system that you don't like, that would be where I would say, okay, well, what what would it take to get your system to a point that you do like it? So maybe you say, you know, I just don't, I don't, I want that tactile base. Well, what subwoofers are you using? I've got an eight inch subwoofer. Well, there's your problem. You're not going to feel tactile base from an eight inch driver. Um, you may say, I've got four 15s and my room isn't really massive, but I still don't feel the base. Okay. Well, that's a calibration issue. That is a placement issue because you're probably sitting in a massive null. 415 should easily be able to, to pressurize a, a, a medium sized room. And so, the other thing you, you were just talking about at Cedia, mm -hmm. how much were some of these rooms? A million dollars or you imagine Absolutely. that. So Absolutely. going to a, a room where there's a wall full of Macintosh amplifiers, yeah. a ton of money being spent on this. And the question I had for Michael was specifically, Correct. did yeah. you hear anything that you've never heard before in your life? And he no. said, no. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got to think about that. Uh, you know, what I focus on are the things that do make a difference, right? right. I, I'm, I'm always trying to figure out what is it that makes the biggest difference? Mm -hmm. Speakers, room correction, yeah. uh, placement, room treatment. These are things that, I mean, like you're saying, it's, it's very audible yes. and easy to measure it, versus let's say if we took that, uh, an AVR and a equivalent pre-pro, mm -hmm. you know, if, if it's a Marantz, stay Marantz, right? So they have all the same stuff and then turn one to pre out dedicated pre out mode and then have the other one the same mm -hmm. and don't do any room correction. Keep right. them both, you know, no correction at all. Mm -hmm. And Go ABM. If, right. if you switch back and forth, I would yeah. bet. I don't know. I don't think you're going to hear a difference. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, or you know, run room correction on one of them and then copy the file to the other one. You right. have to do a. It has to be yeah. scientific if you're going right. to. Right. Yeah. Right? And that's definitely wasn't ours. Wasn't that way. It was like, all right, I got. I'm swapping this thing out. I'm just going to share with you what I what I hear and what I experience. But definitely, there's a lot of variables in there. Yeah. I mean, I would. I mean, I think you're you're right. You're just sharing your experience, but you're also being fair and saying this was yeah. not scientific at no, all. Like, not at all. How do I know that somebody didn't change I, the setting that's before? What yeah. That's what I actually loved about Michael stance because, like I said, you know, at first I, I did see a video where you said I can, I, I, you know, we heard this difference and you described right. it, and yeah. then when you when you when you talked about it again, you mm -hmm. sort of said, well, it could have been this, right. and that's right. great because. Right. It helps so much. It doesn't have to be a definitive answer. It's Correct. honest, and it right. it tells me that because I'm I'm happy with what I have now. I'm I'm pretty happy, and yeah. you know I I don't really I look at it like I don't think I really need anything else. You know, my yeah. now yeah. one other thing I wanted to bring up because I don't want to take all the time. I know other people want to get in. Mm -hmm. I, this is a topic that's come up quite a bit in the chat, and mm -hmm. the question is. Um, and it's not from me. I, I I'm I'm at seven point one point four now, so mm -hmm. it's, okay. it was a question that. Um, someone was asking, and I know Michael. I know your answer was always go with the four of uh, the mm -hmm. four overheads. Mm -hmm. um, but I used to have a five point one point two before mm -hmm. I went to my, you know, then I went to five point one point four, then I right. went to seven point one point four, and that's where I am sure. now. But right. with the five point one point two, mm -hmm. the one thing I will say is that the when I was watching Ready Player One. The mm -hmm. scene where King Kong is going across the top and, and kind right. of running. Across, and he's running. Right? Yep. Yeah. And and you hear that. Like, so in my seven, in my in my current, you know, 7.1.4 setup, it's a little bit, the placement is different, right? Mm -hmm. With the, when, when I only had the middle height, sure. um, it was right above me. It was right. completely, like, directly above me. It couldn't be anywhere else, right? So I guess right. it, it had Correct. to be there. Yeah, it's it just stuck there, right. Used to that. Mm -hmm. Right. But then now when I listen to it, yeah. it's different because there's different things placed in different spots. Yeah. So now he's able to run from the back left speaker to the front left speaker. Is, yeah. And is that, uh, so. is Ready Player One, do they have, uh, do they utilize all the channels or are they only utilizing the two? I don't know. I haven't turned off the like the bed layer speakers to hear just the Atmos to see what they're doing. Cause I'm not sure if that's one of the ones that people have said. Uh, is only utilizing two. So whether you have yeah, know. two, four, or six, they said it may not. There he goes. I knew Reverend yeah, Slim, but I, I, I was. He says it's locked yeah. to a seven point one point two bed mix. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even okay. So so in that case, he shouldn't oh, yeah, hear so any difference then. I don't know, but but you but you definitely hear a difference. Hmm. And I, I don't, and I guess it's because it's object based, right? Is I mean, that, let me that, ask you this too: is that we have to, is this the same house, same room? It's the same room, same house, okay. same room. Okay. Yeah, because I I when I came, you know, I kind I I I did the seven the five point one point two, mm-hmm. and I just you know upgraded everything. That's when I brought the amplifiers, the additional amplifiers, yeah. and all that stuff. Gotcha. Well, but that was the only difference. So I'm mm-hmm. gonna. I listen. I really, really, really appreciate chatting with you guys. I appreciate you calling in the chat on the side. I'm gonna let someone else call in, and hopefully, you won't have to just hear my voice all the time, right? Thanks <laughs> for calling in. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, hey, we appreciate you calling in. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at YouTube.com/daily-i-fi.